everyone. Um, I'm here today with Dom, who you might also know as the MS Guide. So recently he's done a video on his channel with Dr. Vicky Levitt, who many of you may know. And it's actually about how the simple drug aspirin could stop overheating in people with multiple sclerosis when they're exercising. And I know that this is a, this is a huge problem, isn't it, Dom, for a lot of people with MS? Heat in general, Tara, I and mean, people, it's one of the most common symptoms. It's tied into fatigue, things like this. Um, certainly there's types of exercise which I no longer do because it's the buildup of heat and then it keeps building up and then it really starts to sort of mess with you. It affects us all differently and we've all got different limits, but you kind of can tolerate it to a level, then it starts to screw you up. So is it that your symptoms get worse? It's not just overheating. Yeah, or, or should we say new and different ones, sort of like the, you know, my focus tends to go in, um, my balance isn't as great. Exacerbates probably a good word. You know, it certainly heightens things and makes it worse because you kind of tip over this level and go right too hot. And we know that this is an issue for a lot of people as well living with MS. I mean, simply based on the amount of products that are available to buy, you know, which can be expensive and hard to get hold of, like cooling vests and neck fans and towels and ice packs and sprays and all of these kind of things. Do they help you or are they almost, do you think, a bit extraneous and not tackling the actual issue of heat intolerance? I bought a very expensive leading brand cooling vest uh, three years ago. It's not bad, but mm -hmm. it's not, from my requirements, it's not adequate. Everything's addressing the problem from the outside. And I think the difference here is it's addressing the problem or it's a, an attempt to address the problem from the inside. For me, some of the heat sensations I get are false. Yeah. You know, like I, get, I get really hot feeling feet, which when you put your hands on them, feel utterly normal, but they feel to me like they're on fire. So that's a neuropathic thing. It's almost like putting a plaster or a band-aid on top of something, isn't it? Rather than fixing the problem itself, which is what this new study looks like it might be doing. I think it's worth distinguishing because we all want a, a magic pill to fix things. This actually seems real because Dr. Levitt was finding people were not willing to participate in, she's a psychologist, a neuropsychologist, they were not willing to participate in exercise trials because they got too hot and one thing led to another and they ended up designing a proper robust trial and that's the important thing here I think is this isn't sort of a couple of people with sellotape and string hoping to make it all okay. They decided to intervene properly and they looked at not only aspirin, which is not as available, but available in the UK, and paracetamol. The aspirin had a remarkable effect and the paracetamol had a pretty remarkable effect. You know, it was just over half that of the aspirin, but either way, Tara, this is something where these are over the counter medications you know so for six pence if if you can affect your perception or the actual mechanisms that are causing you to heat up the utoff syndrome which is the I medical to term for what's that. happening as someone that doesn't live with ms i you'd approach this from the outside and think oh i hate getting really hot as well it's very uncomfortable i feel very warm it's difficult to get cool but with people with ms this is an actual phenomenon isn't it that has been described scientifically yeah. I mean, overall ms is a degradation of the myelin the insulation on the wire that is the nerve and utoff was a german optician i think or optometrist who noticed this affecting essentially the speed of signals and how fast they're transmitted down the nerves so i think you touched upon vicky's study that she's done in her lab and it was based on other findings relating to fatigue is that right i don't want to put words in vicky's mouth i know it was because the participation in exercise trials because of heat buildup was something so they they designed a trial specifically for this because aspirin's known to have this effect it's not like they made this incredible discovery that nobody knows about. Do you think that this aspirin or paracetamol, acetaminophen, could that be something that people would use on a day to day? Say if it's going to be really hot, especially in places like the UK where we don't, we're not really equipped for 
heat waves, you know, it can get very stifling. Would this be a day-to-day -day solution as well or more specific to exercise? The way I'd answer this is the ubiquity of these medicines, the fact that they are what they call OTC, over the counter, it implies a degree of safety. As Vicky said to me, try it. You're unlikely to expose yourself to some sort of massive risk. I don't think there's any harm for the costs involved of giving it a try. Um, what's the worst that could happen? So as you said, you wouldn't want, you wouldn't recommend to someone, obviously, always consult with your doctor, but there are some implications if you did use aspirin every day, long term, to try and control temperature, aren't there? Yeah, I think if you were finding that you were having to use it every day, there's probably another issue. And it's, again, something worth bringing up with your neurologist. You know, for most people who could access these drugs by walking down to the pharmacy or the petrol station, gas station, if you're American, and, you know, very few people go, I think I'll just call my doctor before I take a couple of Nurofen. You know, so again, if you're staying within the prescribed doses, I'd, I'd have a lash at it myself, because as long as I was sticking those, and I would try it over a few days, I wouldn't go, right, that's me, I'm, I'm buying the world supply of aspirin, and I'm going to never stop taking it. Uh, you know, so you, you see what I mean? It, it's really hard. You're just going to have to give it a go, I think, you know, and, and see. Someone with MS was watching this right now, really struggles with heat intolerance, what would you say to them? I'd want to check off the basics. Are you drinking enough water? Most people don't. Are you, uh, you know, ventilated rooms, fans, things like that? And then, you know, why not try it? Dom, you actually filmed a video with Vicky about this whole study. So I'll drop a link in the comments so that everyone can go and watch that after this. So to everyone watching now, try it out. Let us know how it goes. Leave a comment below, because if there's an exercise that you love to do, but you cannot do in the summer or on those really hot days, try next time, see if it works and let us know how you go. Hey guys, if you want some more useful advice on living with MS, subscribe to the Lived Health channel and check out more of their videos.